Riddle me this. If you were to add NVIDIA's entire market capitalization today, plus Apple's entire market capitalization today, plus Tesla's entire market capitalization today, what do you end up with? The answer, about $7 trillion. That's a pretty big number. Unfortunately, it's still about $1 trillion shy of what ARK Invest believes Tesla will be worth in 2029 in their base case. I'm going to say that again. ARK Invest in 2029 believe Tesla's a fair valuation in the base case, $2,600 per share, which would require Tesla to add an entire NVIDIA plus an Apple or a Microsoft, and they'd still need to come up with another trillion dollars to make that number. You guys might have noticed people getting a little bit excited about what happened with NVIDIA in terms of growth in the market cap, aka stock price in the last 6-12 months. Just imagine Tesla's market cap increasing by two NVIDIAs and then some over the next five years. That's what ARK Invest believe will happen if the stock market is fairly valuing Tesla in 2029. Of course, they could be wrong, but if they're not... 90% of the value of Tesla could be attributed to robo-taxis in 2029. Um, this will totally transform the business model from uh, essentially one-off vehicle sales with a little bit of software to uh, a recurring revenue stream and we think it'll have very attractive margins. Um, so I, you know, autonomous cars will not only change how you and I get around, they'll be so much safer, um, but they'll also be quite profitable to Tesla and very meaningful for shareholders. So Tasha, uh, you know, by 2029, $2,600 a share, that's four years from now, uh, for where we are now, I mean, a lot's gonna have to uh, happen, right? And I gotta wonder, just in terms of uh, scaling and also uh, manufacturing, they have this uh, new system that they, uh, I think, tried to implement, right? Which is more unibody, fewer parts, so faster, cheaper, et cetera. They've abandoned that, apparently. Is that gonna affect uh, a rollout of- Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. I don't know who has prepared this guy's talking points, but clearly they're feeding him garbage. Isn't it amazing how a false narrative can spring up out of nowhere? Tesla recently announces they're going to be implementing some of the learnings from the new manufacturing system in an interim range of vehicles and are still pursuing the completely modular manufacturing system. And that apparently turns into Tesla abandoning their plans for the modular manufacturing system, you fucking idiot. Jesus Christ. And now you guys finally know why I describe them as CNBS. Of, of robotaxis? I think that the rollout of robotaxis is actually not dependent on the manufacturing of the next generation vehicle. You know, I do think that the next generation vehicle will be used for the robotaxi platform, um, but they can turn their current fleet, um, Tesla's been saying this for a while, that they can turn their current fleet into robotaxis as well. Um, so, you know, they could take cars coming off of lease, uh, you know, they removed the option to purchase, for instance, the Model 3 off of lease for that reason, I, so I, I think, so that they can seed their robotaxi network. Um, so I, I think that this, this could be started in the next- Bro, it's, it's 2024, they're using stock footage of Tesla vehicles that's like a decade old. Why? Can you imagine? Just just bear with me. Can you imagine that they're doing a segment on Apple and they're showing 10-year-old products? Or maybe they're discussing a tech company and they're showing an interface of a social media website that is 10 years old? What? If I didn't know any better, and I obviously do, but if I didn't know any better, I might think, hmm, who pays the bills on CNBS? Oh, that's right. Automotive companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars advertising per year, except Tesla. Maybe that's influencing and creating a bit of a bias here where they would feature 10-year-old footage of a technology product while discussing the companies. <laughs> of course, uh, I don't actually think that because that would be a tinfoil hat-wearing conspiracy theory type of deal, which I totally don't think is happening. So let's move on. In the next couple, one to two years is our assumption. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we already see robotaxis today uh, from companies like uh, like Waymo, which is um, Google's effort, um, but it's happening at a very small scale. So I, I think that Tesla could be the first player um, to really bring this technology to scale. Although I have to say that autonomous right now, uh, it looks like the, the Chinese are, are, are a little bit further ahead in terms of, especially in terms of uh, uh, testing uh, the technology. So, you know, something that Kathy said uh, in that soundbite a couple of seconds ago caught my ear, and that is SaaS, software as a service. It strikes me that going down this whole robotaxi uh, route, which is what Musk seems to, to want to do, right, does a couple of things, right? It means, you know, you're not trying to, you're not thinking of a, a car, an EV, as a commodity. You're thinking 
thinking of it as a service. And you're also thinking about volume that is wholesale sales, not to individual customers, right? Fleet sales, because that's what robo-taxis are, are likely going to mean, yes? Yes. Uh, and, you know, and, and first, I'd actually push back that, that there's more testing happening in China. I think there's a lot of news out of China and it's, it's very aggressive. It wants to be, you know, electric vehicle autonomy forward. And I think that's the right decision. Um, and that's that's what the government wants for sure. Um, but actually, the uh, you know, the U.S. has been um, uh, pretty surprisingly um, lenient when it comes to testing this technology because it's decided at the state level. Um, so, you know, Tesla, for instance, uh, already they already have over a billion miles uh, cumulatively driven in their full self-driving software. Um, you know, and then on the software as a service model, absolutely. So we picture this being a, a fleet sales uh, model uh, that could be the end consumer companies could pop up and this could actually be a profitable business model, uh, particularly for companies today that, you know, actually might have to um, change what they're doing if they're tied to the traditional gas powered car. Um, ecosystem that that could be an option, or it could be a startup um, that you know owns and maintains these fleets. Um, but ultimately, we picture Tesla taking a cut off of uh, per mile revenue, much like Uber does today. Um, but I actually think that they could take a, a higher cut than Uber does today, um, because uh, you know well, one, the underlying cost structure is better, um, and then t you know I think that um, t if Tesla wholly owns and operates the network. And uh, you know is able to charge Uber and Lyft equivalent prices. Um, you know, again, in the, especially in the early years, we think in the first like fifty percent of all miles um, that will go to robo taxis, that is where all of the economics will be. So that's yes. why it's so important to be early to scale here. Tasha, can we circle back to the fifty-six billion compensation package? And is isn't it wild to see the interactions between Arx analysts and the finance media? It's as if no one takes what Ark has to say seriously. If they did, they would be making a huge deal out of what seems to be utterly absurd in terms of Ark's predictions for Tesla's future valuation. If this does play out, if five years from now, give or take, Tesla has literally added roughly another seven, seven and a half, eight trillion dollars to its market cap, along the way, there necessarily will need to be periods of staggering increases in Tesla's market cap. Remember when this happened? Late November 2019, Tesla stock split adjusted, call it 22 bucks a share. A few months later, stock had surged 350%. A few months later, nearly 500%. A few months later, 1200%. A few months later, 1700%. And remember how literally every day along the way, non-stop discussion about Tesla? People were describing it as remarkable, unprecedented, never happened before, holy shit, it's crazy. Everyone jumped on board. This roughly $1 trillion surge would pale in comparison to the 7 or $8 trillion market cap increase that ARK predict for Tesla over the next five years. No one seems to be taking ARK Invest seriously, which wouldn't be the first time. Let's think about this differently. Are there any greater risk-adjusted opportunities available in the public markets today? Any companies out there positioned to do a 10x, a 14x, call it close to a 15x increase in value over the next five years, weighted by the amount of risk involved. Obviously, a company that's just starting up, if it's publicly available, from a much lower base, there'll be plenty of those that in theory could and likely will do a 10 or a 15 or a 20 or a 30x. But those companies entail an enormous amount of risk. They're unproven. They don't have an unassailable lead. Personally, I'm not aware of any of these such companies in terms of a better risk-adjusted opportunity. Otherwise, I'd be buying them, not Tesla, but still buying Tesla with every spare cent. One final point I'd like to make. Tesla stock peaked at just over $400 per share in November 2021. It's still down nearly 60% from that point, getting close to three years and down nearly 60%, despite moving enormously further ahead in terms of autonomy. If Tesla stock today was where it was at its peak in November 2021, ARK wouldn't be anticipating an approximate 14 to 15 times increase in Tesla's market cap over the next five years instead be half that amount. However, it's entirely possible that Tesla stock could have been significantly higher than it already is. In fact, it could have been higher than its all-time high closing price a few years ago. If things had played out a little differently, no scamdemic, no fascist lockdowns, no insane financial stimulus, no interest rates through the roof, no Elon bad, no Elon buying X, no Elon distracted, maybe Tesla stock's $600, $700 a share today. Then ARK Invest, maybe looking at a three, four, five X in value. What I'm getting at here is we have the perfect setup Tesla's been absolutely crushed. The stock 
not the company, the company's killing it. The cyclical nature of the automotive industry, combined with sky-high interest rates, combined with people's unfounded fears about Musk being distracted, has clouded people's ability to see what Tesla has done and how much closer they've moved to unlocking this robotaxi future. I still cannot believe in the last 12 months, people were able to pick up Tesla stock for $138.80 per share. I mean, look, I'm not religious, but I have to say my, my belief in the flying spaghetti monster has increased exponentially as every time I pray for a discount, the one true God, the flying spaghetti monster seems to deliver. The only thing to me that's more stunning than Tesla stock still today as I record this, mid-June 2024, under 180 bucks a share, is the fact that there were people selling around these levels and talking publicly about doing so. <laughs> uh, of course, I won't name and shame. But man, this is literally the best possible situation. I just You couldn't ask for a better opportunity, in my opinion. And one closing thought, you know what's going to happen now that Musk's compensation has been ratified by Tesla shareholders? Tesla's going to go back to Kathleen McSeebo and say, hey, bitch, fuck you, get fucked. Shareholders approved again, fuck you, fuck off, thanks. Then a new package is going to be proposed, which is going to incentivize Musk to likely 10x the company or more over the next 10 years or less, execute on robo-taxis, make massive progress with humanoid robots. In other words, a huge carrot will be once again dangled in front of Musk to incentivize extraordinary performance, which will directly benefit Tesla shareholders. I anticipate an extremely exciting next five years. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. And I haven't missed a daily video in more than three years. Must be a coincidence, right? Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. Plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend, seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. 
unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst that could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.